In this problem, we're given two functions, f and g, and we are to find the composite function f of g of x and find its domain. It turns out the domain of the composite function f of g of x will be all real numbers except for two values. So our job is to find those two values, call them a and b, that would not be in the domain of the composite function because for those x values the composite function would be undefined. Because the outside function used here is f, that ultimately means that we are going to put some expression in the parentheses here that would be the input into f. Remind yourselves when you evaluate a function that your input goes here in the input variable x. Now the question is what are we replacing x with? So for example, I could copy the function f of x down and where I see the input variable x, I could replace the input variable both here and here with a blank set of parentheses to guide me through the problem. So what's more obvious to most students is if we were to ask them to find say f of 7, that would mean to replace x with the number 7 here, in which case it would read 1 over 7 minus 3. In this problem, however, we are not to replace x with 7. For this question, you see that we don't have a number here as the input into f. We have the function g of x. So if you want, you could think of it as that f of g of x means that we're ultimately plugging the function g of x into the input variable here, in which case this would be g of x. Or, because they gave me that g of x is 1 over x minus 6, you could look at the g of x here and replace it with what it's equal to. It's equal to 1 over x minus 6. So the fact that they have the letter f here means we're ultimately going to plug something into the function f. Whatever is in the parentheses is actually what you plug in, and this is the location where you plug that into. So we are to take the expression 1 over x minus 6 and plug it into the input variable here, x. So whatever goes here goes here as well. So what I have here is the composite function f of g of x. So I've found what we were supposed to find. I found the composite function f of g of x to be 1 over 1 over the quantity x minus 6, then subtract 3. Finding the composite function is step 1. The ultimate goal, however, is to find the domain of the composite function f of g of x. If you look at what we have, we have a complex fraction, meaning that we have two denominators. And whenever you have a function that has a denominator with a variable in it, you must consider any x values that would make that denominator zero. In mathematics, we do not define division by zero, and since it would be undefined, we would have to restrict that x value from its domain. So the easy one is this denominator, x minus six. x minus six would be equal to zero if someone were to replace x with six, right? If I add six to this side of the equation, I would get x. If I added six to this side of the equation, I would get six. And you could see if someone replaced x with six, they would get 6 minus 6 or 0 in the denominator, and we don't define division by 0 in mathematics, so we must restrict the domain to exclude x equals 6. So one of the values that we were to find was x equals 6. The other one is a little more complicated to solve. That would be this denominator. Notice that this is the denominator of the big fraction that has the fraction bar going all the way from here to here. And if you were to copy that denominator down and set it equal to zero and solve, that would look like this. This is not so easy to determine just by looking at it what the x value would be that makes that entire denominator zero. So I wrote it down. I'm going to solve for x by first adding three to both sides. Adding three to the left-hand side would simplify to be simply one over the quantity x minus six. Adding 3 to the right-hand side would give me 3. Since the quantity x minus 6 is being divided, I could multiply both sides by x minus 6. Multiplying the left-hand side by x minus 6 and the right-hand side by x minus 6 leaves me with a left side that would simplify down. If you want to think of this x minus 6 as being over 1, if that helps, go ahead. So this is a factor of the left-hand side of the equation and x minus 6 in the denominator is a factor, so they would simplify down to be the number 1. So this would be the number 1, and it's being multiplied by 1 here, if you will. So I have the number 1 on the left-hand side. On the right-hand side, you may distribute the 3, if you'd like. 3 times x would be 3x, and 3 times negative 6 would be negative 18. Continuing to solve, I would add 18 to both sides of the equation. That would give me 19 on the left-hand side, 
adding 18 on the right hand side would simplify out to be adding 0, which I won't write. Now the 3 is being multiplied by x, so to isolate x I would divide both sides by 3. So now 3 divided by 3 is 1, and 1 times x is just x. And now you see why it wasn't so easy for me to ascertain, in my mind at least, what the x value would be that makes that entire denominator 0, because it does not come out to be a nice whole number. So it turns out if someone were to replace this x value with 19 thirds and simplified out, you'd still have the 1 in the numerator, but your entire denominator would be 0, because that's what we found. We found the x value that makes that entire denominator 0. And again, we don't define division by 0 in mathematics, so that is an x value that we must restrict the domain so that we do not include it. So x equals 19 thirds. Now, they wanted us to call these two x values a and b. If you're doing this problem in math AS, the way the current problem is written is that they want to define a to be the smaller of the two values. They say this by saying a is less than b. So not that you need to change your answer 19 thirds, but you at least have to figure out whether 19 thirds is smaller than 6 or bigger than 6. And since 3 goes into 19 6 times, in fact 3 times 6 is 18, you'd have 1 left over. So 19 thirds is 6 and a third, which means that we would label the 6, the value a, and we would label 6 and a third b, because the math AS question said, let's let A be the number that is smaller than B. So A would be 6, and B would be 6 and a third, or if you want, you could just type in 19 thirds. So just to verify that I get credit for those values of A and B, I will type in A equals 6, B equals 19 divided by 3. I will press enter to submit my answer, and I get credit for both parts. So hopefully this video was helpful.